Today marks the final lecture on flow cytometry panel design. How to address challenging issues in panel design. One of the most frustrating challenges in panel design is dealing with insufficient instrument channels. For instance, experiments require the analysis of human Th1 slash Th2 slash Th17 cells and selects the following five markers, CD3, CD4, IF and gamma, IL, 4, and IL, 17A. However, they soon realize their instrument only has four channels. What should be done in this situation? The first step is to understand the role of each marker in this multicolor experiment. CD3 is used to gate T cells, and within the CD3 plus T cell population, CD4 and IF and gamma double positive cells are identified as Th1, CD4 and IL, four double positive cells as Th2, and CD4 and IL, 17A double positive cells as Th17. To resolve the issue, we can use a method called panel splitting. How to split panels? The principle of panel splitting is to group all the relevant markers for detecting a specific cell type into one panel and perform the detection separately. Originally, we plan to detect Th1 slash Th2 slash Th17 cells simultaneously using a single panel. Now, we can split these three cell types into three separate panels for individual detection. Panel 1 CD3 CD4 IF and gamma. Panel 2 CD3 CD4 IL4. Panel 3 CD3 CD4 IL17 A. Since CD3 and CD4 are co-expressed in Th1 slash Th2 slash Th17 cells, these markers will be included in each panel. Besides panel splitting, in some experiments, we can effectively use a LIN to exclude unwanted cells and identify the target cells. What is LIN? LIN is lineage.in flow cytometry. LIN does not refer to a single marker but rather a collection of markers. These markers are labeled with the same fluorochrome, and during data analysis, cells expressing this fluorochrome are excluded leaving behind the LIN negative cell population. Although the name LIN remains the same, the specific marker collection can vary in each panel depending on the target cells. For example, the phenotype of human dendritic cells, DCs, is LIN HLADR+. We can use LIN, CD3, CD14, CD16, CD19, CD20, CD56, FITC, and HLADRAPC effectively analyzing seven markers while using only two channels. Additionally, as mentioned in the previous video, when designing a panel, you will encounter various practical challenges, making it impossible to satisfy all conditions simultaneously so. Which factors should we prioritize? The traditional rule for panel design emphasizes balancing strong and weak signals. Many researchers follow this principle, but in practice, the primary consideration should be the characteristics of the dyes. For instance, when analyzing Treg cells, we need to detect CD4, CD25, and FOXP3. Since FOXP3 is an intracellular marker, therefore, it is necessary to stain the cell surface markers CD4 and CD25 first, and then stain FOXP3 after fixation and permeabilization. If we choose CD25 conjugated to PE, psi 7, the fixation and permeabilization steps would quench the PE, psi 7 fluorescence resulting in no signal detection from this channel. Therefore, in such cases, avoid selecting PE, Psi 7, even though it is bright and suitable for weakly expressed markers. That concludes this session on flow cytometry panel design. Follow us on YouTube by scanning the QR code or find us on TikTok by searching Elab Science. Let's unlock more flow cytometry knowledge together.